treasurer, but let me tell you what's been going on in the state Senate. And I love that communication between the party and the legislature. I have a newsletter that I send out weekly. I send it to all the newspapers, 11 newspapers in my district, and I email blast it too. So if you want that update, I will send it to you. I will email it to you. And it tells you how I voted, why I voted. I mean, I don't go over every single bill, but I do go over the highlights. And it, it we do need that communication because you guys, this is a team effort. We, as the candidate said, we don't get anywhere without you. And I literally think of you as I'm voting. I do. In fact, I can name certain individuals on certain bills that I have in my mind when I'm up there fighting for you. So I'm gonna switch a little bit. State treasurer. How many think that the state treasurer is about handing out unclaimed money? <laughs> exactly. I that's, that's probably what most people think that office is about. That office can do so much more than that and should be doing more than that. I'm gonna talk about transparency and accountability. <coughs> We're going to talk about the Kansas first. We need to put Kansas first. So let's start transparency. And you guys may not know me. I'll give you a little bit of background on me. I'm a software engineer by trade. My husband and I are fifth generation Kansans. We have a fifth generation ranch, Tyson Ranch in Lynn County. Can you guys hear me in the back? Am I projecting? I'm sure on video it's like, I'm uh, yelling at the video, but I need you guys to be able to hear me. So transparency, as a state legislator, when I first got elected, I was in the house for one term and I was looking around and I was looking and if a state employee and a federal employee stay the same night in a hotel in Kansas, guess which one was paying less? The federal. That makes no sense at all on the per diem rate. So that one little change that I was able to do as a freshman saves the state a million dollars a year. So I dig into the budget, I'll fast forward. I kept doing things to change the budget process, improve it, but when I got elected to the Senate, I was digging in again and I saw that every jack in the Capitol, they were being charged $32.50 a month. Think about that. So every jack in your house, every computer jack, every phone jack, $32.50 a month. That's a big red flag, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, as a legislator, we're 90 days in session. We do it part-time. Like I said, I'm a software engineer full-time. We own and operate a ranch and small business, my husband and I. We keep busy, as do most legislators. So I went and asked legislative post audit to audit this information and find out what was going on. When I went and gave my presentation, one of the senators on the committee said, you need to listen to her. She used to work for NASA. She knows how to find the wasteful spending. Boy, was he right. That audit exposed $30 million with no oversight. We were being fined by the federal government because we were not managing our money properly. They won a national award off that audit. I'm just giving you these examples. I could give you so many more, but I dig into the budget and the finances, the transparency. Just last year, we passed legislation and I worked diligently. I treated it like a software project instead of like a legislative project. And it was property taxes. You guys, and I'll ask you the question real quick. If you could lower property tax, income tax, sales tax, which one would you choose to cut today? Property tax. property tax, I tell them. I said, I speak everywhere, it's always property tax. <clears throat> How many on sales tax? A uh, few, nice. okay, yeah. including yeah. food, food yeah. sales yeah. tax. Yeah. Okay, and then income tax. Yeah. It's property tax by a landslide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to do. That's what we need to take care of. So what we did was we had legislation that forces transparency in property tax. You will know who is raising your property taxes and why now. You guys recently got your valuations, right? Your letters? Okay, that is not the property tax increase. What's gonna happen now is you're gonna get another letter 
and it's a revenue neutral rate in any property taxing authority that wants to go up over a penny more than what was collected last year they have to send out a notice and they have to announce a dot a date and a time of a meeting that you get to go and watch for trend and watch them vote in public and you get to comment this is all by statute that legislation i won a national legislator of the year <clears throat> I went to, my, my father-in-law says I need to tell you that I went to San Diego for the award so that you know it wasn't just some group. It was a National Legislator of the Year for Transparency. Thank you. Yeah. So that's the attitude, transparency with the state treasurer's office. We do the same thing. We put all the transactions online. That way you can see how the money is being spent legislators can see how it's being spent and we can cut wasteful spending that way that is exactly how we're going to shrink government like i said i've been fighting this for years i've been we've had some successes we need a major success and i think that transparency would would do it for us there you there is a website i can't remember the url and it does have some transparency but I want you to be able to drill down to find out the project and drill down to where the money's going to. I'm a software engineer. That's the other thing that we need. We need somebody that understands how to manage and implement IT projects at the state level. You guys saw what's happened with the unemployment system. Complete disaster. I was appointed to the unemployment council and able to demonstrate some logistical processes and we were able to implement an rfp process for auditing and a few other things those are the types of things i want to take to the treasurer's office and get done at the treasurer's level also accountability that transparency you're going to have accountability that way the other way is auditing we used to have a state auditor years ago in the 70s and they got rid of that position so guess who's doing most of that function now? The administration, the governor's <coughs> office. Talk about the fox watching the hen house. Yeah. That is a major problem. Yeah. I'll give you a quick example. And PBS actually, or NPR, NPR broke this news story. What happened was the legislature asked for an audit of the um, pharmaceutical supplier, CVS, for the state of Kansas, the P PBMs. And so we requested an audit. The administration decides to award that audit, but before they award it, they let the company that's going to be audited, CVS, approve the winning contractor for that oh, audit. Good heavens. Wow. I kid you not. This is only in government. This is so crazy. I'm not finished yet. Oh. The subcon I know. The subcontractor on that award had a non-disclosure with CVS. Oh so when we get the audit, it's didacted all over the place. That is not how our tax dollars should be spent. Uh -huh. I will fight that diligently as the state treasurer. The other thing is Kansas first. You guys heard my opponent made a comment that he didn't necessarily think that the legislature should get involved in whether we divest investments with capers from russia i didn't have to think twice about that the legislature should absolutely be involved in that and kansas capers money should not be involved in those types of risky investments we should not be in china we should not be in russia and there's any other country that has a dictatorship in fact my opponent brought in an expert from russia and he said there is no way that you should be investing funds in a dictatorship country because they can always pull those funds. Mm -hmm. They don't operate yes. under the same rules we do. And that's with any country. We need to make sure that the countries that we're investing that money in have, yes, that they are open and honest records and that they have the oversight and authority that we do in the United States with our investments. We know it's not perfect. We know you get scandals and fraud,
but we cannot risk capers money being in that kind of investment no. the other thing i want to do is the 529 and 529a savings are you guys familiar with those yeah. their education savings program and for disabled what that does is the programs like that we educate kansans that they're available and out there for them so we help kansans manage their own money we make them better investors so that they can make their own decisions. The other thing is the links program. I know I'm throwing a lot at you quick. I'm sorry, guys. Um, okay. I do need to get back to do tax. But what the links program does is short term, low, uh, low interest, short term loans that the local banks can use to loan out for small businesses and agriculture loans. We need to expand those types of programs. So we're using Kansas money that's in the bank to help our communities and investments. And I've just got so many ideas. You can tell I'm not running for state <laughs> treasurer because I think it's gonna be a cool position or, you know, I, I think that finances are so critical for the state of Kansas, for you, for me, for everyone. We've got to have the transparency, the accountability, and make Kansas first. That's what we have to do. And I absolutely will do that as state treasurer. You guys all take questions. I'll tell you really quickly what's going on in the Senate, the legislature. Last week, we had a three-day period, over 50 bills. We would get them at night in the evening, the list of bills that were gonna come above the line and that we would have to debate. Myself and a few others, we would stay up all night reading those bills and trying to get amendments prepared for the debate. This week, we're in conference committee. So what happens in conference committee is all those bills that passed tend to get bundled back and forth. And it's a very difficult process that you, you know, we're in the final stages. You absolutely cannot take your eye off the ball. I'm fighting for you to lower your taxes. One of the things that I want, I'm pushing for, and I hope we can get the house to agree somewhat, but social security, you guys know that there's a $75,000 cap you start paying Social Security if you reach that. We want to change that cliff so it's not a cliff. I would like to remove income tax on Social Security completely in the state of Kansas. Mm -hmm. I would also like to remove it on all retirement accounts in the state of Kansas. Yeah. 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 Well, and it just makes sense because we're losing people to other states. We need to start making this a, a taxpayer friendly state. The other thing that we had legislation, the Senate's passed it several years in a row, it would freeze property tax for low-income seniors and disabled veterans. We're trying to get that passed again this year. I don't know, for some reason, we've got one or two people in key positions in the House that do not want it, and they keep shutting us down. But I'm not giving up the fight, you guys. Mm -hmm. The other thing, we had a really innovative, good piece of legislation this year. The Senate passed. I was proud to introduce the bill. You have a $20,000 exemption. They subtract it from the valuation of your home on the 20 mil that you pay for schools. We increased that, the Senate did, to $65,000 this year. It had not changed since 1997. And we put a multiplier in it to go up with inflation like everything else does, right? Mm -hmm. Your taxes shouldn't go up, they should decrease according to inflation. So we're working on that also. I, we're getting some pushback. We may not get 65,000, but if we get 40,000, we doubled it. Yeah. So it does help in saving your property taxes. Uh, there's quite a few other pieces of legislation. We've got a lot. It's a, a chess game at this point to try to keep it alive and keep it in play. I know food sales tax is in play, but from what I heard tonight, you guys would rather have lower property taxes, lower income taxes, yeah. Yeah and then we worry about sales tax. But, um, so I'll open it up for questions. Okay. And I'm so sorry, you guys, that it's such a rushed week, but. So the, the appraisal that we got, the property tax thing, that's not right? Something else? That's your valuation. Right what, the, she's asking about the letter that you just got in the mail. It's on your property taxes. That's the valuation. And your valuations did increase that much. <laughs> that's a whole nother issue for property tax we had an informational meeting on that today in the senate 
that needs to be addressed also. It just won't happen this year. But your valuation letter, you got it. You will get a revenue neutral rate letter. If any of your taxing authority wants to collect one penny more than the previous year, overall, let's take an example, your county. Say your county income tax was, or your county property tax, let's say $50 million. That, that's how much they collected last year. It's a smaller county, say. So if they want to collect $50 million and one cent, then they have to send out a letter to everyone in the county. Now, I have a feeling you're going to get those letters and they're going to say, oh, we need to increase because of inflation. Well, I would question that because they are, they received all this federal money. They, yes, they've been increasing property taxes for over 20 years now. Where's all the money going? But this was about transparency. It was about truth in taxation. That's what Kansas has in statute. And we just expanded that so that you know who raised your property taxes and why. It's taxation with representation. And that's what the United States is about and that's what Kansas is about. So now we fight the fight to get them lower. Can, can you speak on capers for a bit? Because yeah, sure. a, a large percentage of people in here are on capers. capers retirees at the, haven't had a raise in over 20 years. Yep. Yep. And then I read something, there was a, a new, new capers federal model. That's what I was working on. Yeah, okay, so capers. How many of you are on capers in here? Okay, actually that's a low percentage really for um, the state, I forget how many it is statewide, but it's a very high number. The uh, capers, I was the only Republican that voted for an increase for retired in, in uh, retired capers people. Um, so it didn't fly, it didn't go anywhere in the Senate. But I, did, I used to work on the TSP system. I know a few of you know what that is. Thrift Savings Plan? What, yes, okay. It's the federal retirement system. So what happened with capers is we've got tier one, tier two, and tier three. And my opponent's telling you he saved capers. Well, if he saved capers, why are we still talking about it? Exactly. So what happens is I've been talking this for years, and finally we pulled the trigger. Representative Hyland and a few others, we've been working very diligently. We've been working with a finance company. What it would do is we called it Kansas TSP, and it would allow anyone in capers to convert to TSP type system if they want to. Nobody has to if they want to. And the bill says that it must continue to fund CAPERS, tier one, tier two, tier three. So they have to continue to fund it, but it does allow people in tier three, if you do the math, they have to pay more than any other tier in the program. It's not a good program for tier three people. We, we had superintendents and others afterwards would admit it is not a good program. So what this Kansas TSP would allow them the option to convert to that. And it allows them, it's like a self-directed IRA is what it is within parameters. You have certain parameters. The TSP system, over 1% of participants in the TSP system, it's made millionaires. You can't say that about any other retirement system, okay? And I know your retired capers, they don't want anything to change. That change scares them. This would not change it for them. It would just change it for people that would like to transfer to the other system. That's all it does. The bill, it was just a talking point. We got it kicked out of committee. We will continue to have that conversation. Capers is, I'm, I, when I invest, I invest very conservatively, okay? I am not a risky investor. I would have never been in Russia. I would have never been in China. My finances are not there. I, th I feel the same way with capers. We must have a system that is not putting the taxpayers at risk or the capers employees at risk. And when we invest in risky they expect the rate of returns to be seven to eight percent on capers in order to sustain where they're at now. 
It's not feasible. They took out one and a half million dollars in bonds in a loan and said that that saved capers. A loan is not saving capers, okay? That's right. So we must continue this conversation and we must be smarter about our finances and our investments. So the, the current retirees wouldn't be affected by that, right? Mm -mm. That, that would just be people that are working that's going to enter. Yeah, he said the current entire retirees would not be impacted by that bill. They would absolutely not be impacted by that bill. You, the funding would still remain the same for CAPERS. Um, yes, so. Oh,